So take us through something that we would be surprised with as lay people about playing professional lacrosse. You know, obviously professional lacrosse is very different than a lot of other professional sports. Um, It's not a full-time gig for a lot of people. Um, With the creation of the PLL, Paul Rabel and Mike Rabel did a really good job of trying to make make lacrosse a thing that you can do full time and you know as as you know the way that you do that is by trying to create an incentive um you know to play right so you know obviously that that comes to a wage right so like if you're you know if you're able to make a living um the way that i always describe it to people is 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 if you you kind of everyone kind of has their their you know their main job and then they also play lacrosse um if you can get as many people as you possibly can just full time into lacrosse what you're going to create is more coaches because the other way to create income is is through coaching um and the more good coaches you have the more grassroots programs that you can create um and the more that it can kind of spread from there so um what paul and mike did at the creation of the pll is obviously um creating wages just for a summer that give you the opportunity to if you want to you know let's say the average the average wage for the pll is thirty thousand dollars for a summer so let's say you have that thirty thirty thousand dollars now you want to go coach at a high school let's say you know and and not many coach not many high school coaches make, uh, you know, a bunch of money, but let's say it's like $25,000 for a high school season. Now you have your spring and your summer. Um, now you can also, let's say you run a club team and you know, your club team, you're, you're bringing in for 20 to $40,000 for your club team. Um, it's the sport is very entrepreneurial, um, is, is kind of what I'm trying to get at because, um, if, if we want to have lacrosse be a real, a big time sport, we're going to need people in it full time. And you're going to have to eventually have season people who like in the MLB, they, you know, they are baseball players the whole year. They don't have another job. They, they train for baseball and and the product on the field is better because they're able to have that year round and they live in the place that they, that they play. And, you know, then they become a little bit more of a, you know, you know, a little kid is going to see him in the, in the, in the pizza shop and you can have that kind of, you know, interpersonal connection. So, I'm kind of all over the place here, but my point is um, lacrosse is very entrepreneurial and a a lot of guys, the summer is an absolute grind, Um, you know, for, you know, for, for you and I, you know, or, or, you know, for, for the average, um, you know, take my, my, my friends from high school, for example, right. They, they work in the city or they work in Port Washington or work in, you know, kind of this area and, you know, they have weekends off and, you know, they can, they can, you know, they work, they work hard all week, you know, they, they work long hours, but then they have, they'll have the weekend off and they'll be able to kind of, you know, go to the beach, go golf, go do something. Um, for, you know, the people in the, in professional lacrosse, um, you have your main job that you are working full time and then you're flying out on Friday night to get to your game on Saturday. And then you're flying back on Sunday morning and you don't really have a weekend, right? So for the 12, uh, for the 10 to 15 weeks, of a season throughout the summer, which is, you know, typically your time to go and do things that are outside and and go to the beach and hang out with your friends. Um, You know, for professional lacrosse players, you, you, you have your season, right? And the other side of that is all of your training is not with your team so that becomes a really you know a tough thing to do in a lot of cases because um when you're in a team environment you're able to kind of push each other you're able to kind of do those things but when when you know two guys are living in new york city i'm living in bethlehem pennsylvania a guy's living in dallas three guys living in la you know you you don't have team practices so you know the the connectivity that you have is all inspired through your phone um and Kind of like you know, trying to stay connected throughout the week and prepare uh, your 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 individual game because that's all you can prepare. You can't do you know you can't practice offensive sets. You can't practice defensive schemes. You have to just basically depend on your own personal preparation, and you have to trust that the other twenty guys on your team are doing the same. So that way, when you do show up, you can have the best chance of winning a game. Um, and I guess the thing that would uh, that 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 
a lot of people would be surprised of, I guess, with my personal, you know, agenda in the summer is as a college coach, the summer is the is the most important time for recruiting. Mm -hmm. Um, So for 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 my personal weeks is like you know i'm at a recruiting event for for the for the month of june and july on a regular year obviously this past year wasn't very wasn't very regular um but you know for for june and july of a regular year i'll basically be you know in hotels or you know bouncing from one event to the other from monday you know let's say an event from monday through wednesday or a recruiting event just to be just to be clear, a recruiting event from Monday to Wednesday, and then like Thursday and Friday, I'll be at another event, and then I'll fly out Friday night straight from that event, and then I'll fly play my game or be at practice Friday night, play my game Saturday, and then I'm flying back in either on a red eye Saturday night or early early Sunday morning to get to the next event on Sunday, and then you know then it repeats all over again. So you know, um, and that grind is no different from every other college coach because instead of going and flying out to the games, they're going to different recruiting tournaments or recruiting events and things like that. So I'm very lucky because that's a, you know, that's obviously a, 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 that's basically two days or three days sometimes a week that I am not recruiting. Um, So I'm very lucky to have a boss. So Kevin Cassis, um, who's our head coach, who, who sees the value in me continuing to play because he played for, for eight years after college while he was college coaching as well. He sees the value, you know, in, in, in me playing and he's okay with me missing basically two or three days of work. Um, every week, right? Because I am because of the process of flying out and, and, and practicing then playing and then leaving. Um, so, you know, and that's not that that's not an easy thing. Um, you know, I know a lot of a lot of guys have retired from professional lacrosse, because at a certain point in your career as a coach, you have to kind of be on the road all the time, right? And you have to be recruiting. So, you know, there, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky to be a part of a, a coaching staff that absolutely, first of all, works their tails off right with with both my head coach and our um you know our associate head coach will scudder um and they you know they're able to kind of handle that that two-day period that i'm not there for right so i'm very i'm very lucky there are a lot of guys who in college coaching just don't, don't really do it anymore um because they have to be recruiting um but you know just like I guess the the surprising thing is when you see the product on the field which is usually a very high level product and you know when you're watching the pll um that you know all that preparation comes and all that practice and training comes like at random times throughout the week like i do not have a a set i you know schedule and regimen during the summer because you know some days the event will start at 8 a.m so i've got to work out at 10 p.m and then some days the event will start at 9 a.m so i can get my workout in at 6 a.m and then kind of be able to be at the event the rest of the day and um you know some days i have access to a, a goal and some balls some days i'm like at at the back of an event doing 300s between games because that's when i have that's when i have some time to uh you know to train a little bit so it's um you know i think the i think most people do understand that a lot that everybody has kind of their um kind of their main job and then kind of they they also play um but i think that a lot of people would be surprised at the the variability um that each player has for their training um and how that kind of leaks into their game day and their game day preparation is very different for everyone and is definitely something that's not easy um it's not like you know it's really just not something that is for everyone there are a lot of people who who you know at a certain point get to the point and and a complete in a completely understandable way um to a point where it's like okay like you know, I've got a, I've got a wife and a kid and I'm not gonna, you know, sacrifice my weekend and that extra two hours, you know, every day to work out. Like, you know, it it just becomes a lot. So, you know, I, I, I give a lot of credit to everybody who stays in the league and specifically the guys who are in the league for a while. I, I, you know, I, I think that it's, that it's unbelievable and it shows how much people love lacrosse. Um, and it shows how, what what kind of community and what kind of people are involved in the community is is you know hardworking people that like I said earlier are very entrepreneurial in a lot of ways um, because you know I I have you know a coaching job but you know a lot of guys do club coaching and high school coaching and, and run clinics here and there and, and you know they have to be very you know malleable in order to make their you know make their uh, 
make ends meet, right? So, you know, I think that that's, that's probably something that people would be, you know, or maybe somebody who doesn't know professional lacrosse, how, um, you know, how different of a week it is in terms of their preparation than, than say, an NFL football team, you know, so. 